A warm welcome to today's talk. It's Wednesday the 25th of August. Now, I don't think I've had as many comments on a video as we did yesterday on the FDA's full approval of the Pfizer vaccine. So I want to look into that in a little more detail and do a bit of a critique. And there are questions I would have for the FDA. Let's just put it as simply as that. There's, there's a question I've got. So um, we'll look at it now. Now, this is I started my thinking off on this, looking at this um, article here from the British Medical Journal, uh, published on the 23rd of August. So uh, BMJ Opinion. So it is Opinion, but um, this is Peter Doshai, Senior Editor of the British Medical Journal. Now he says this, the FDA should demand adequate controlled studies with long-term follow-up and make data publicly available before granting full approval to COVID-19 vaccines. Interesting. Now, it seems he's concerned about uh, adequate controlled studies, long-term follow-up, and data almost suggesting here that the data is not all publicly available. So is this, uh, is, is this true? And we, we do find there are some justifications for his concern. Now, I'm being really careful in this video, only to say what is uh, I've got evidence for. So um, just just bear with it. It is a bit of a complicated one. So this uh, this here is the original uh, Pfizer press release. So that, that that's this one, Pfizer press release. Obviously, all the references are there for you. Now, this is from the 1st of April 2021. So this is the... Uh, Pfizer press release on the original uh, efficacy data of the uh, their, their Pfizer BioNTech vaccine, all there in its uh, glorious detail. If you if you want to read through that, so the vaccine basically is highly effective with a ninety one point three percent vaccine efficacy, is the suggestion there. And bear in mind this is the first of April. Uh, before before Delta times in virtually everywhere, certainly before Delta times in the United States, but 91.3% vaccine efficacy against preventing uh, infection. But the data cutoff for that was the 13th of March. So this report here is clearly dealing with very early data, um, da data that uh, was cut off on the 13th of March 2021. So pretty early stuff. Uh, immunity measured uh, measured seven days through up to six months after the second dose. So here we're seeing that it, the longevity appears to be six months. But remember, that was published on the 1st of April and the data cutoff was the 13th of March. I know this is a bit complicated, but stick with it. Now, six monthly safety and efficacy uh, vaccine data. This is published on the 28th of July. Now, that is this paper here, available here in a preprint form. And again, it's all there. I've downloaded the PDF. You can download the PDF there. The full detail is actually there on that paper. So again, I think I'm only telling you what is in the, uh, in the literature here. So that's that study. That's the reference. Ongoing phase three COVID-19 vaccine trial. Now, bear in mind, the press release was the 1st of April. Uh, there, that's the 1st of April. That was the press release. And uh, this is published on the, uh, this was published on the 28th of July. So um, April, May, June, July. So you'd expect six, seven, eight, nine, ten, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. You'd expect 10 months follow up data here, wouldn't you? Which would make sense for this, uh, this large, this paper. Ongoing phase three COVID-19 uh Ongoing phase three COVID-19 vaccine trial. Good. Absolutely. Vaccine effectiveness against COVID-19 was 91%. So they're still quoting the same efficacy figures here on the 28th of, published on the 28th of July, as they were published on the 1st of April. But bear in mind that 1st of April bit was cut off on the, on the 13th of March. Um, and then we take a direct quote from, this is not from the abstract I've shown you, this is from the paper itself. The current report provides uh, update efficacy analysis conducted on cases um, occurred up to the 13th of March 2021, which of course is the same <laughs> as the original press release. And, and strangely enough, it's a 91.3 versus a 91% efficacy. It's basically the same efficacy data. So... <sighs> 
Rather strange there that that full follow-up paper published on the 28th of July still had a cut-off date way back in March, the same as the 1st of April cut-off. But that same paper did acknowledge that the efficacy on average declines of, of uh, around about 6% every two months, even, even by that paper standards. So you could argue that there's a lack of internal validity there, that the uh, it's almost contradicting itself, but it, and it does appear to be, con well, in my mind, it's certainly contradicting the previous press release of the 1st of April. OK, so move forward to the 23rd of um, 23rd of was it the 23rd? This was published 23rd of August. Yeah, 23rd of August. The FDA's release. Now, obviously, with this is a lot more time has passed now. So obviously would expect um, the data to be fully updated as the FDA have done this massive full review of just about everything to give it full approval. So let, let, let's see what the latest data is. So that is from this here, FDA full approval. That's the link based on results from clinical trials. The vaccine was, oh, oh, 91% effective against preventing COVID-19 disease. Oh, dear. So we see that the data here apparently doesn't appear to have been updated from the 13th of March, despite this full approval granted by the FDA on the 23rd. So I wonder, uh, I don't know, I don't want to put words into, um, I don't want to put words into uh, Peter Deschai's mouth, but maybe that's what he was concerned about, that there should be uh, adequate and uh, data publicly available before granting full approval. Maybe this is part of his uh, concern. So uh, that is interesting. And again, I'm just trying to go completely off what is actually said here in the literature. I'm not giving you an opinion. This is this is just what this report says. So this is the FDA full approval here. And that, that's it. And, and there we see it. There we see it there. Based on the results of the clinical trial, the vaccine was 91% effective at preventing disease. And that sentence was published on the... 23rd of August by the FDA as their FDA approval press release. Um, I'll, let me give you my opinion here. Uh, sloppy at best, FDA, sloppy at best. So question to the FDA here, what's the latest figure? What is the latest efficacy figure? Second question, why wasn't the latest efficacy figure published on your press, press release granting, uh, giving the information about full approval on the 23rd of August. Now, there's other other aspects of this we could have looked at, but you know you can only look at one. One we're just looking at one thing, so we'd get it right. Let's get this detail correct. So, 91% efficiency. We see from the press release from the paper, and apparently reinforced by the FDA on the 23rd of August. Come on, come on, FDA. Simply, in my view, FDA not good enough. But let's go back to last week and the paper we reported on here by the CDC, published 18th of August. So that's what, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, five days before uh, the FDA um, published that uh, questionable sentence. We looked at this at the time in great detail, of course, um, New York data, from memory, it was about 10 and a half million people in this study. New York, New York data, protection against infection, 25th of July. 25th of July in the United States, in the New York area, 97.8%. 97.8%. But we look at the uh, August the 23rd press release from the uh, FDA and we see their sentence says 91% efficacy. So to me, 91% efficacy there and 79.8% uh, efficiency there. In fact, there, there, there it is. Let me just show you the whole thing so you know I'm not making this up. There's the whole thing there. That is that uh, paper of the 18th of August. Yeah, here we see it in this paper here. Um, the, the overall age-adjusted vaccine effectiveness against new COVID-19 cases for all adults declined from 91.7% to 79.8% during this uh, time period. So uh, read the full thing for yourself. Now, we have to balance this 
um, because we're talking about protection against infection here. Now, this same study, this um, uh, that one from the uh, CDC, that did point out this. Um, so age-adjusted effectiveness against hospitalisation was maintained. So that, 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 that they said that ranged from 91.9% to 95.3%. So this is not talking about protection against hospitalisation. It's talking about protection against infection. Direct quotes during May the 3rd to July the 25th, 2021, the overall age-adjusted vaccine effectiveness against new COVID-19 cases for all adults declined from 91 to 79.8%. So that's clear. But during the same period, the overall age effectiveness uh, against hospitalizations was relatively stable, 91 to 95.3%. So direct quotes in case I've misinterpreted something. So um, that is pretty clear, really, I think. Now, moving on to more up-to-date data provided by Israel. Um, so Israeli data here now. This is a Reuters report. Uh, vaccine effectiveness in preventing both infections and symptomatic disease fell to 64% since the 6th of June. And of course, in Israel, they are now starting to give a lot of third doses. So Israeli data, 64% there. And if we just remind ourselves of what the, uh, the FDA approval report said, published on the 23rd of August, um, yep. 91% effectiveness. OK, I mean, th th this really is it really is a bit sloppy, isn't it? I mean, Israel says Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine is just 39% effective as Delta spreads, but it still prevents severe illness. So still preventing severe illness. We need we need vaccination, but uh, it'd be good to have accurate data. And that data is from the 20th uh, of June to the 17th of July. So, um Interesting statement from uh, Peter Deshai there. We need uh, a bit more data and we need full public transparency. And to be quite honest, I expect FDA press releases to be up to date. I would expect that. Now, the reason people are concerned about this is justified because... Let me just give you some information as I understand it. Now, I got this. I started off again from the British Medical Journal here uh, and uh, did check the references. Now, this paper here is published by Fierce Pharma. Um, you can read it for yourself. I've put the link there. I've no reason to assume it's uh, inaccurate, but I can't actually validate its validity um, either. But the reason that we're a lot of people are concerned is is this the, the data from here that's from the, so the bmj is quoting this source and that is the, the that is the source here the uh, fierce pharma is the source of this information um the company now predicts 2021 sales of 33.5 billion dollars i mean we're dealing with money that's off the scale here pfizer and biontech now expect to deliver 2.1 billion doses of uh Co I haven't learned to say this word yet. Co 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 Commonarity, that's the new Pfizer BioNTech vaccine, how it's being uh, marketed worldwide this year and manufacture three billion. Wow. And we believe, according to this article, this article actually tells us that the average price is uh, about $15 or th this or another article in that series. Um, now, I, I have no way of authenticating this. I, I don't know, but that, that's what that source says. Uh, 2022 production capacity at 4 billion. So if they were to sell 4 billion doses, you don't need me to tell you that's like over $60 billion. So um, you can see why some people might be a little bit uh, cynical uh, about, about this. Now, um, what do I think? Well, I'd like to ask the FDA those questions. Why was the press release out of date? Um, it seems clear, though, that the, that the data is saying that the vaccine protects us against uh, good levels of protection against hospitalisation and death. But it also seems clear now that infection, protection against infection alone is waning and that press release um, from the FDA uh, doesn't really seem to communicate that clearly to my mind. Now, Different people in different parts of the world are looking at this, of course. I'm only one guy looking at one aspect. That's all we can do. But um, 
those questions for the FDA remain. Why was your information apparently out of date on your press release of the 23rd of August? What is the new, uh, what is the new, um, the new figures? And, and when will we be able to see these new figures? Thank you. And of course, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for watching.